I come originally from Eritrea, so I grew up in the capital Asmara, but um, we were really happy as children when it rains, when rains fall. But sometimes there were times where there was no rain for consecutive two or three years, and you see it in the eyes of your parents, in the eyes of everyone who is an adult that the consequences of drought, you see it in the consequence of the food prices. So um, I was not responsible at the time, I was a kid, but we were sharing the happiness when rains fall, but we were also uh, were impacted by drought when uh, there was no uh, rain for consecutive years. So it was really um, a good feeling when it rains. The atmosphere in the family, in the house changes. That rains are coming, crops are going to grow, there will be more food. So it really, uh, uh, really gives me a lot of passion now to work on drought. When drought strikes, everyone is affected. That means it doesn't really discriminate in terms of sectors, in terms of countries, in terms of who is going to be affected. So we have in the end realized that drought is not going anywhere. And I'm very hopeful that uh, the momentum has come for, for every one of us to work on drought in non-drought times to be prepared. We should not be waiting for drought to strike. Bef uh, we have to really act on it before it has taken its toll. Drought that affects Ethiopia, affects Kenya, Somalia, Eritrea. So there is a lot of opportunity to cooperate. So coordination, cooperation and communication is very important. And one thing that I would also tend to say is drought is expensive. When it strikes and when we are going to respond to it, then it is very expensive. There is a lot of, it makes economic sense to, to invest in drought measures in non-drought times, then you can really minimize its impact.